Hello, my wonderful friends. I'm so happy to be with you today. We're gonna get started with some circle time activities, continuing with the letter W. W is for wonderful, and I'd like to say hello to each of my wonderful friends. Let's get started. And another word that begins with the sound of W is weekday, the name of our very own school. Let's sing. One, two, three. Good morning, weekday friends, how are you? Good morning, weekday friends, how are you? It is time to start our day. We are here to work and play. Good morning, weekday friends, how are you? Eyes are watching, ears are listening, lips are closed, hands are still, feet are very quiet. You should really try it. Listen time, listening time. Hello, Rowan. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Sophia. Hello to Callie, too. Hello, Bradley. Hello, Brianna. Hello, Aria. Hello to Vivian, too. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Anna. Hello, Amelia. Hello to Mila, too. Hello, Zachary. Hello, Liliana. Hello, Miss Nancy. Hello to Miss Lynn, too. And welcome. Another W word. All right, we are still in the month of April. We're right in the middle of the month of April. So how about singing our April song together? Do you remember it? Let's try it all together nice and loud. Here we go. Pitter patter raindrops falling from the sky. Here's my umbrella, hold it high. When the rain is over, the sun begins to glow. Little flowers start to bud, then grow, grow, grow. Very good. Now we do get a lot of rain in April. That's what we were saying about, but today is a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. So I have my little sun puppet here, but my weather cards got mixed up again. So I don't know how to match the word sunny with my sun puppet. Can you help me? Let's take a look. Oh, I think I can do it. Do you know how I should do it? Well, remember, even if we can't read the weather word, we can look for a clue. Do you see a clue? If you said the very first letter of the word, you're right. Does this word say sunny? No, I see the letter R here. I'm gonna guess that that's another weather word. Probably rainy. That's right. Does this word say sunny? It does. And my clue is that it begins with the letter S. And I'm gonna match it up with my little sun puppet. So, even though we're just starting on our reading journey, we can let the first letter of a word help us out, especially when we're matching it with a picture or an object. All right, friends, let's take a look at our April calendar. Remember, the month of the year is always at the tippity top of our calendar. And this says April. January, February, March, and April, May, and June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Woo. Okay, I'm gonna put my little pointer down, pick up my pretty wand, because wand is a W word, and this is W week. Every week has seven days, seven days, seven days. Every week has seven days. Can you name them all together nice and loud? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Good job. What day of the week is it today? I'll give you a hint. It comes after Thursday. T-H, make the sound th, like Thursday. So what comes after Thursday? Friday, very good. Today is Friday. April 17th, 2020. What day of the week was yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday was 
Thursday. Today is Friday. What day of the week will it be tomorrow? This is tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Saturday. Good. How many days are there in the entire month of April? How do we know? Well, we're going to look at our calendar. We're going to look for the very last day, the very last number on the April calendar. And that is up oh, right over here. It's a three and a zero. Do you know what number that is? Good, it's 30. Let's say that together, 30. So the very last number tells us how many days in all. Why don't we count them starting with number one, go all the way to the very last day of April. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Good job, 30 days in April. Okay, do you remember our W song? We're gonna move on to that right now. Let's hear it nice and loud with your arms in motion. Here we go. Watching the whales waving in the water. We're watching the whales waving in the water. Watching the whales waving in the water, waving to the wiggly worms. Woo! Good job. I love that one because it's silly, but it really teaches us about the sound of W because we hear the word watching. We, heard, we hear the word whales. We hear the word waving and the word water, and of course, the word wiggly, and the word worm. Lots of W words in that song. Okay, so we've read some stories that focus on the letter W, where the wild things are, and away for Wadney Wat. We're gonna read another one soon. We've practiced looking for objects that begin with the sound of W in our giant wheelbarrow. Today, we're going to practice writing the letter W. Okay, here we go. We'll start with uppercase W. We know that all letters have an uppercase and a lowercase. They are partners. W, both uppercase and lowercase, are slanted line letters. That means they don't go straight up and down. They go on a slanted line, almost like we're writing or drawing a little mountain. So we're going to start with uppercase W and that's going to start at the skyline, way up top in the sky. We're going to trace it down on a slanted line to the grass line. And we're going to slant it back up, but we're not going to go all the way up to the skyline, we're going to the plain line. And then we're going to slant it back down again to the grass line. Are we done? Not quite yet. We're going to make one more slanted line up to the skyline. Is it okay if it's a little wiggly? Yep. Okay if it's a little waggly? Yeah, that's okay. We're working on this and they're going to become even better the more we practice. So there's our uppercase W. Now lowercase W looks very much the same, it's of course smaller. So we're not starting way up high at the skyline, we are starting in the middle at the plane line. And it's going to slant down again, not straight up and down, but we're writing it on a slant. We start in the middle at the plane line, slant down to the grass line, slant halfway up, we're not going all the way up to that plane line. We're going down again, and we are going to slant it back up to the plane line. And that's our lowercase w. So it looks a little bit like we're going down and up and down and up a wonderful wiggly little mountain side. Okay, friends, we're going to try them again. You're going to get your little finger up in the air and you are going to practice writing it up in the sky as I write it on our chart. Here we go, uppercase w. We start at the skyline, we trace down to the grass line, slant back up to the plane line, 
slam back down to the grass line, and slam back up to the sky line. Uppercase W. Good. Now we're gonna try lowercase. We're gonna put it in the air again, okay? Put your little fingers up. You're going to trace it in the air as I write it on our chart. Lowercase w starts at the plane line, traces down to the grass line, traces halfway up, so we're sort of between the plane line and the grass line, slant it down again, and back up to the plane line. Lowercase w. Okay, we're gonna try it one more time, but this time you know what to do. You're going to write these letters on your hand with your finger and give yourself a little tickle as you practice writing the letter W. Here we go. On your hand, uppercase W, start at the sky line, trace down to the grass line, slant up to the plane line, slant back down again, and one more time, slant it up to the sky line. Woo! Did you give yourself a little tickle on your hand when you practice writing letter W? does tickle. All right, lowercase w starts at the plane line, slants down to the grass line, slants it halfway up, halfway down, and then from the grass line to the plane line. Lowercase w. Okay, friends, that was wonderful. We're going to take a look at a story now that really does focus on the sound of W. Now this is a fun book because, well, it stars a very interesting animal, but this book has no words, but it does have some really great pictures. And we're going to practice looking for this very fun animal called a walrus. So when we're looking, when we're reading this story, looking through its pictures, you're going to look for the walrus on each page. This is Where's Walrus by Stephen Savage. And there he is, giving you a little wink. Wink is a W word. All right, I see some animals. Where are they? If you said zoo, you're right. They seem to be all in their enclosures, including this little guy, the walrus, in his pool, looking for something to do, while the zookeeper seems to be taking a nap. Uh-oh, the gates of the zoo were left open. What's happening? Where's walrus? There he is. Okay, my friends. Let's take a look at this page. Looks like Walrus found a fun little fountain to play in. Where's Walrus? There he is, looking like a beautiful sculpture in the fountain. All right, Zookeeper is walking by a diner and sees some people enjoying a cup of coffee and a piece of pie, including Walrus. Where's Walrus? There he is, wearing a hat like a little gentleman. Okay, friends, look at this funny page. Where's Walrus? Yes, he's in a shop window, trying on a hat with the fancy ladies. There's Walrus. Oh my goodness, where's Walrus now? Looks like he's at a construction site. Is this Walrus? Nope. Is that Walrus? No. Where's Walrus? There he is. <laughs> Good job. All right. Looks like Zookeeper can't find Walrus yet. Where's Walrus? There's Walrus helping out the firemen. Oh boy, looks like Walrus found himself up on stage doing a very fancy dance called the Can-Can. Kicking his little legs up, 
and wearing a little feather in his on his head. Where's Walrus? Here's Walrus. Now Walrus is having some fun painting a picture in the park. Where's Walrus? Yep, there's Walrus painting a picture of the good old zookeeper. <laughs> oh my goodness. It looks like Walrus found something really, really fun to do. Walrus looks like he's about to dive into a pool. Where's Walrus? There he is. You think he's going to be good at this? I do. Oh, here he goes. Flipping and somersaulting and taking a beautiful dive into the pool from the high diving board. There's Walrus. Splash into the pool. He goes. And his little swimming cap fell off. The judges are giving him a score and they gave him all a perfect score. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And the crowd cheers. Where's Walrus? There he is at the surface of the water. Not, on, not only did Walrus have fun, but he won a medal, the gold medal. Did the best job of any of them. Where's Walrus? There he is, so proud. And now, Zookeeper brought him safely back to the zoo, but he gave Walrus something very special to enjoy. Can you see what it is? Yep, his very own high diving board, so he can flip and dive gracefully into his pool and have a lot of fun. Where's Walrus? Whoop, <laughs> there he is. That's a fun one. And it's interesting because sometimes books don't need words to be fun. This one had just great, great pictures. Okay, friends, we're going to make our very own walrus. I'll tell you what you are going to need. And if you don't have any of these things, that's okay. You can use your imagination. You can always do this craft at another time when you have the things that you need. Or you can even take out your crayons and your markers and you can just draw your walrus. And sometimes that's the most fun of all. All right, to do this craft, you're going to need some cupcake holders. They can be any color. I used white, but you can really make any color work. If you don't have cupcake holders, you can use just circles of paper. So you'll use some construction paper too. You'll also need a paper plate and you'll need some crayons, especially brown crayons, because we're going to kind of make our walrus brownish in color. And you can use some Q-tips to glue on for your walrus's tusks. That's what I used. You can also use popsicle sticks or even little toothpicks, or you can cut out his tusks from construction paper if you'd like to do that too, whatever you have handy. You probably have some wiggly eyes. I sent those home with you back um, in the end of March. So hopefully you have some of those left. If not, you can always draw on Walrus's face, his nose, his eyes, and of course, his wonderful whiskers, whiskers, her W word. Okay, so what you're going to do is color your paper plate, color your cupcake holders, and then you're going to glue them on a sheet of construction paper, any color you like. Give a good press so that we're sure they stick down. You're going to stick your little tusks, your Q-tips or your craft sticks or your white tusks that you cut out of paper by yourself. Glue everything down good and tight. Give it a good press, make sure it's glued. And then you can work on his face or her face with eyes, a nose, and some whiskers. You can make some water in the background or even a scene from the book, Where's Walrus? Down below, I wrote W is for walrus. And a little later, I'm going to practice writing uppercase and lowercase w. You can do that on your walrus picture. And you can also do it on the W sheet that was sent home. You've seen these before, so you know what to do. You're going to practice tracing uppercase w, lowercase w, uppercase w, and lowercase w. After you practice tracing it, you're going to try it on your own. Okay, that's uppercase, and that 
is lowercase. Okay, you're going to fill in all of your writing and then of course you can color your pictures. These are all W words. Say the word and then color it in. These are all words that we've talked about throughout the week, right? And that's letter W. I hope you enjoyed the book and I hope you have fun making your very own walrus. I think they're going to come out great. Remember, if you don't have something, that's okay. We're going to just do our best and make it work. And you can always take your crayons and color a beautiful picture of a walrus yourself. All right, I feel like singing the W song one more time. Would you help me do that? And then we'll say goodbye. Watching the whales waving in the water. We're watching the whales waving in the water. Watching the whales waving in the water, waving to the wiggly worms. Woo! Okay, so it's a beautiful spring day. Before we say goodbye, I'm gonna go outside and I hope you meet me out there. Does that sound good? Great, I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi friends, I'm here to read you a wonderful book. It's a beautiful spring day and it wouldn't be spring if I didn't read The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle to you. I love this book for so many reasons. The most important reason is that it teaches us so many things. The most important thing I think this book teaches us is the life cycle of the butterfly. What is the life cycle of the butterfly? Well, that means we're going to learn how it starts out and how it ends up. And I have a great song to teach you that has to do with the life cycle of the butterfly. You ready? Here we go. Need your hands for this. We're going to act out the life cycle of the butterfly. The butterfly starts as an egg, as an egg, as an egg. The butterfly starts as an egg. Let's see what happens next. A caterpillar hatches out, hatches out, hatches out. A caterpillar hatches out. Let's see what happens next. It becomes a chrysalis, a chrysalis, a chrysalis. It becomes a chrysalis. Let's see what happens next. Butterfly comes out at last, out at last, out at last. Butterfly comes out at last, then it flies away. Good. All right, here's the story of a very hungry caterpillar. We're going to learn many different things about the butterfly as we continue with the season of spring. Miss Rebecca showed you some of her caterpillars and you're going to watch how they grow as she shares her videos with you too. This is The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carr. You've probably heard this story before, but maybe you didn't know that caterpillars, when they eat, they eat right through their food, making little holes as they go. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. Now, if you know the words of this story, I'd love for you to join in with me as we read. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. One, two, three, four, five, five. This is my favorite page. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night he had a stomach ache. What is your favorite thing to eat on this page? 
They all look pretty good. If I had to pick one, I think it would be the chocolate cake. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. I hope you love that story. I think Eric Carle did a magnificent job with this story, with the words and with the pictures. He did make a mistake in this story. Do you know what it is? Well, butterflies don't build cocoons around themselves. That's what moths do. What do butterflies build around themselves when they're forming? When caterpillars build that little house around themselves? Is it a cocoon? No, it's called a chrysalis. And that's the little mistake that Eric Carle made when he wrote this book. But that's okay, we still love Eric Carle and we love this book, all right? So we're gonna learn much more about the butterfly, the caterpillar, and the entire life cycle of this interesting, interesting animal. All right, you have a sheet that was sent home that you're going to practice numbering the steps in order of the butterfly's life cycle. So, we know from our song that a butterfly starts as an egg. Good. Which of these pictures shows an egg? Yes, looking very carefully, I see that there's a little group of eggs on this leaf. So that's the first step. So on the line next to that first step, I'm going to write number one. Very good. And then I'm going to remember the story and remember the song. And I'm going to put all of these steps in order of the butterfly's life cycle. So you have to figure out which one is number two, which is number three, and which is number four and then you're going to write the number next to each picture to put them in order, all right? And when you're done writing the numbers next to each one, of course, you can color your pictures as beautifully as you'd like to, okay? Have fun. And remember that a butterfly starts as an egg, as an egg, as an egg. A butterfly starts as an egg. Let's see what happens next. A caterpillar hatches out, hatches out, hatches out. A caterpillar hatches out. Let's see what happens next. It becomes a chrysalis, a chrysalis, a chrysalis. It becomes a chrysalis. Let's see what happens next. A butterfly comes out at last, out at last, out at last. A butterfly comes out at last, then it flies away. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, my friends. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.